not her fault, just how she was reared. Now, she was still very young when she first came here, in her first year of life, albeit fully grown, but she'd also been very badly malnourished prior to coming here. And this meant that her first supposedly working set of flight feathers had actually grown in very weak and very brittle, and had mostly all snapped off. So she wasn't very well equipped for flying. Now, it took about three years after we got her of feeding her a decent, well-balanced diet before she managed to grow in her first working set of flight feathers. So Mortimer was about four years old before she got anything above three foot off the ground. So as a result of that, Mortimer is now scared of heights. Which is a bit of a drag, really, when you consider the fact that out in the wild, bulls are tend to soar on the thermals at between about a thousand and two thousand feet. And they use their incredible eyesight to hold in on anything that's edible to them. Are you listening to that, Mortimer? Just going to take the buzzard for a walk. Only a month after. Now she's happy to do this. We're happy to let her. She looks a little bit like a malevolent chicken. Anyway, buzzards are what we call opportunists, which is a very kind way of saying that they're incredibly lazy and they like to eat dead things. Their favourite form of hunting is to sit on a lamppost next to an A road or a motorway and to wait for rabbits to get run over. Squash bunnies don't run as fast as living ones, you see. So in places where they're even more common than there are, they are here, such as South Wales, you'll quite literally find them next to the motorway there, going into Cardiff, and they'll be sat on a lamp post, waiting for rush hour to dish up breakfast. So they hold a very similar ecological niche in this country to vultures abroad. But that's kind of where the similarity ends, you see. Because uh, uh, the vulture is a specialist carrying eater. It, uh, it doesn't hunt, it doesn't kill. It's just got big chicken feet. It's not a true raptor, you see. And the word raptor comes from Latin, and it quite literally means an animal that hunts and kills with its feet. And in this present day and age, that means diurnal, daytime birds of prey, and nocturnal birds of prey, owls. As I was saying, vultures have big chicken feet, they land on a carcass and they start eating. But buzzards here do have constricting talons. They are a true raptor, they're perfectly capable of making a kill for themselves. They just prefer not to because it's hard work. But when they do run out of carrion and dead bodies to eat, their main principal prey item then is the rabbit. And the fate of the rabbit and the buzzard are intertwined to such an extent that when myxomatosis was introduced in the 1950s to control the rabbit population, it also ended up having a knock on effect with the buzzard. Now rabbits being what rabbits are, they recovered relatively quickly. But it's taken buzzards 50 years <coughs> to make up their numbers again. But to such an extent that they're now officially Britain's commonest diurnal bird of prey, they're even more common now than the kestrel, would you believe? But we thought that seeing as we like our birds to do things which come natural to them. How about we kill a nice fluffy bunny rabbit for you today, what do you think? Yeah? I'm going to go and introduce you to our other member of the Mickey Birds team. This is our resident stunt bunny. Goes by the name of Legless. Had an illustrious career as a stunt double for the cast of Watership Dell. Career to see out his retirement years. Now the idea being that I run like the croppers, pulling Legless behind me. And more to all, as you can see, is working himself up into a killing frenzy. <laughs> That's it. Better out than in. She's going to show you her hunting skills. So here goes. There we go, that was dynamic, wasn't it? That's the bully bunny going in a straight line at one and a half miles per day, shouting, kill me, kill me. Now, do you think rabbits would be like that in the wild? They're not, are they? They're going to do their utmost to try and avoid getting killed. So what I'm going to do now for kill number two, is I'm going to try and make the rabbit behave like a wild one, like So jink about, take evasive action, get up to burst of speed, to try and avoid getting killed. So this is kill number two, the naturalistic version. So uh, don't blink. It goes. Oh, here she comes. There we go. Hunting buzzard. <laughs> As you can see what sets a predator apart is its ability to make split second decisions. <laughs> 
angry was it? <laughs> Dizzy was it? She went out of habit. Kill. <laughs> Give her a round of applause. She's giving you a laugh if nothing else. <laughs> Right now, then. Can you picture the scene out on the fell? Where rabbits. No. It's over here. Where rabbits get up to burst of speed, revenge, you see. Where rabbits get up to burst of speed at around 30 miles an hour. And there, furiously chasing through the heather, is Mortimer, the common buzzard. Now, based on that performance, what do you reckon the chances of survival would be in the wild? Nailed. She's had 19 years practice. You think she'd have had 19 years to learn how to hunt in the wild? She wouldn't have even had 19 weeks. By the way, she's not old yet, she's only middle-aged. She could live up to 40. But uh, anyway, in order to learn how to hunt and how to kill, you've got to learn timing and coordination. The way we teach that here at the L Centre is by doing a catch in mid-air. Catching me there, Mont. There we go, good job. That's the first one this week. Yeah, she deserves that one. Right, Mortimer's now done everything that's required of her. And now we come to the highlight of her day. And that's T-Bone Mouse. Yum. see it's quite amusing but it does have a serious side to it and that is that we never taught Mortimer to chase rabbits on foot. It's something she came up with all by herself and it's a fair indication that had she been born in the wild she would probably now no longer be alive. Because out there in the wild you can't afford to be a slow learner, not learn all like Mortimer. You've got to learn to survive after the manner of your kind as quickly as possible. And if you don't do that you certainly won't survive long enough to breed. In front of every clutch of eggs that buzzards hatch, only the strongest and the cleverest survive long enough to breed for themselves. So only the strongest and the cleverest actually end up passing their genes on to the next generation. Now this is known as natural selection, it's what keeps the species strong. So even if we could breed with Mortimer here, which we can't because she's an imprint, we wouldn't, because there's every chance that we might end up passing her thick gene onto her offspring, and we would be releasing into the wild buzzards which would have a tendency to chase rabbits in foot. Okay. The rabbits are lovers. Not that it matters whether Mortimer can breed or not, because she's more than happy doing the job that she does here. And in so doing, she more than earns her keep by being an ambassador for her, wild, for her counter counterparts in the wild. And in our off you are this, okay, you can have a more. Here we go. You be quiet now. Now, uh, in our few areas, we've got a disabled, ex wild injured with their buzzards, birds which have injured due to no fault of their own, they're now disabled and can't go to the wild. But other than that, they're happy enough and they're healthy enough. And most years they breed, and when they do, we tend to release their able bodied offspring into the wild around Moncaster. So if in your travels here today you do see any buzzards up in the bottom, there's a very good chance that you might, there's every chance that the birds that you see flying free, that they would have been born and bred in our aviaries here. I hope that goes some way towards answering any criticisms you may have. Bat seeing owls and birds of prey and aviaries. It's always a reason for everything that we do. Right, Mortimer's going back round the corner now, and I'm going to go and get the barn out. <laughs> <laughs> 